to Pure Yoga Home. Today I have prepared a strong flow for you that will open your hips. So make sure you're wearing something comfortable and um, get ready to warm up. So to begin with, come into a comfortable seated position. We're going to do alternate nostril breathing, which is a balancing breath, balancing both our left and our right energy channels. So taking your right hand, middle and index finger can either fold down towards the palm or you place them in between your eyebrows. And then using your thumb and your ring finger to open and close your nostril. Place them just over the nose wings to start with, taking a deep breath in. Exhaling fully. Inhale once more, deep breath in. And then use your thumb, sliding it down, closing the right nostril, breathing out, inhaling through your left. One, two, three, four, then closing your left and exhale on the right. Three, four, inhale right, four, and exhale left, four, inhale left, exhale right. Inhale right, exhale left, and release. Take a moment to notice, observe, feel, and then we're going to do the same breathing exercise, this time using your left hand. So index and middle finger of the left hand being placed in between your eyebrows, thumb and ring finger again being used to open and close your nostrils. To begin with, take a deep breath in. And exhale fully out. Then close your left nostril, inhale right, two, three, four, closing right, exhale left, four, inhale left, exhale right. Inhale right, exhale left, inhale through your left nostril, exhale through your right nostril, and inhale through your right nostril, exhale through your left. Beautiful, I hope you've got clean airways now. Take a deep breath in here, exhale through your open mouth, bring the chin to the chest at the end of the exhale, inhale, imagine there's a bar going down your back and you're kind of diving through, moving your spine in a snake-like fashion, opening your heart and chest, inhale, and exhale, rounding your back, tucking your tailbone. Maybe you're feeling your hips here, so this will be a beautiful practice for opening your hips. Then change the cross of your legs. And once more, inhale, having that diving motion, very slow, like a snake moving the spine. Inhale, opening heart and chest. Exhale, gently rounding, starting with a tuck at the tailbone and continuing throughout the whole spine. Then inhale, come to neutral. And begin to wriggle the fingers, wriggling your toes. We're going to come to stand up in a fun way. So obviously you can take, get up any other way, but I invite you to place your hands behind your knee creases and take a couple of little rolls. Massaging your spine. And now with the next one, I want you to come up to standing. Voila. Standing at the front end of your mat, shaking out the body, that's it, shaking out your shoulders. We're going to do a couple of dynamic movements. So I want you to get into your knees, inhaling your arms up, exhaling arms back. Inhaling arms up, exhaling arms back. Inhaling as if you're swooping the earth up, exhaling back. And now for some left and right brain side movement, both arms up. 
Inhale here, and as you exhale, swing them like a wheel going into your knees. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. Change of direction. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. One more inhale up, exhale down. That's it. Take your hands both your shoulders and do a little twisting motion. Make sure here that you're not twisting in your knees but you're moving a little bit the whole body. And also taking your heels off the mat. That will be really nice. You're protecting your knees here and then slowly coming into center from here we're going to do a standing cat cow so place your feet mat distance apart come into a gentle bend in your knees take your arms out in front of you and then just like in a full kneeling position cat cow we're going to do the same movement with the spine so on the inhale you open into a gentle arch, arching also the upper back. On the exhale, tucking your tailbone and rounding your back, chin to chest. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. And exhale, round. Beautiful. Bring your hands towards your heart, step your feet together and we're going to do a breathing exercise that some of you might be familiar with from Bikram Yoga. Interlacing all ten fingers, placing your thumbs by your throat and the knuckles of your fingers underneath your chin. We're going to inhale, reaching our elbows up, keeping our shoulders relaxed and then exhaling, opening our mouth Bring the elbows together in front of the body, shoulders relaxed. Inhale, elbows come up, chin comes down, shoulders relaxed and feel free to inhale with a dry breath. Drawing the navel in, exhale. Now three more of those. One last, the deepest. Inhale, increasing the volume of your lungs to the top. And exhale, breathing it all out. Fantastic. And then come to your neutral mountain position, arms alongside the body, let your shoulders rest, close your eyes, just for a moment observe. Adjust your clothes if you need to. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Beautiful. Now we're going to slowly move our way into a downward facing dog. So we're coming into a forward fold first. Gently stretching the back side of your legs. So you can generously bend your knees here, taking a little walk, feeling out the distance of your hands, which should be shoulder width apart, letting your head hang relaxed so that there's no strain in that. And then slowly from here, walk your feet back into a downward facing dog. Feet are hip distance apart, two fist width would fit in between. And also here take the dog for a gentle stroll. Make sure that you are having your fingertips and knuckles firmly pressed into the ground. And you are extending out of your hands, elbows turning down towards the ground. So you're rotating your upper arms in an outward rotation, in an outward fashion. Keeping your shoulders safe and the shoulders broad. Beautiful. Then from here, we're going to lift into a one-legged dog. Starting first with our right, raising the right leg up. And opening our hips, bending at the knee, pointing the right foot towards the left. And then describe little circles here with the knee, creating a rotation in the hip socket. And then change the rotation into the other direction. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. One more. Three on each side and then slowly return. Three-legged dog. Point both hip points down. So it's not really about how high you raise that right leg. Flexing the right toes rather. Just come into that beautiful expression here. Wonderful. And then stepping your right foot through to the front. In between your hands. Opening your hips in a half cobra. So you're dropping your left knee. Attacking the toes of the left foot. Opening the chest. Take a deep breath in here, exhale, lengthen through the right leg into Hanumanasan. Half split and a beautiful stretch for your hamstrings and calf muscles. Inhale here, exhale, fold over the right leg, bringing the forehead to the right knee. And then inhale, rise back up, framing the right foot with both hands. Your toes, extend the left leg and come back to downward facing dog. Okay, warming up with three legged dog on the other side. Left leg rises, left foot is flexed to start with. Take a deep breath in here on the exhale. Bend your left knee, pointing the toes of the left foot over to the right. And then begin with your circular motion here, rotating your thigh bones in the hip socket. Three rotations to the one side and then three rotations to the other side. Wonderful. Finish with number three. On an inhale come back to your three-legged dog pointing the hip points down towards the ground, hip bones. Flexing the left foot, inhaling here. Exhale, step the left foot through in between your hands. Half cobra. And then up. Exhaling, moving to your half split hands underneath the shoulders. Flexing the left foot for a juicy stretch of your calves and hamstrings. Inhale here. Exhale, folding the upper body over the left leg. Inhale, up, and exhale. Bringing your hands back to the front, tucking your toes, and stepping the right foot back to a forward fold. Shaking out the head, yes and no. Inhale, coming to halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. <sighs> Beautiful. And from here, we're going to jump our feet back. You can also walk, step, or jump. Uh, sorry, walk or step them. So just walking your feet back or you're jumping them back into a plank pose. Holding your plank. Inhale here. On an exhale, floor through your chaturanga of choice, knees, chest, chin, or lowering down the upper body. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, back to downward facing dog. Wonderful. Coming into your first warrior for today, you're going to step your right leg, right foot forward, coming into a slow step, and then opening up. Lifting up the upper body and turning on the left foot so that the heel grounds and you can ground the outer edge of your foot. That means you have to have to heel toe your right foot a little bit out. That is fine. So coming to your warrior one first. Gentle opening in the hip and really remember here that it's not about pushing yourself into opening. It's about gently easing your way into relaxing tight muscles. Okay. Muscles are not a stretchy material. Muscles need a lot of compassion. So, easing into your warrior one here. We have a series of couple of strong holds ahead of us. So good to center your mind, come back into your breathing. Inhale here and exhale, open to warrior two. So the beauty of warrior poses is really that we can expand and lengthen out, stretch.
stretching gently in a standing pose into each direction. So imagine your head is being pulled up, your feet are growing roots, really digging into the mat, and you extending through both your arms, bringing the upper body into center. You can play a little bit here with what that means, but often you see people leaning forward. So you want to kind of tuck your tailbone just a little bit here and ease into that stance. Your right knee, the front knee, will always have to be in alignment with the right foot. So basically, if you're looking now, you would see one line of the thigh, knee, and the tip of your foot, the toes. Also, the bend of your right knee should never be more than 90 degrees. So make sure that's the case. Still in your warrior two, you're going to reverse the warrior. Inhale, turning the right palm up, exhale. Gentle reversion. Beautiful. Inhale, return to warrior two. And then exhale, bring the left arm through, extended side angle here. Make sure that you don't lean on the right thigh, but activate your core. And then here, exhale, sending length into the left arm up and lengthen to the right arm down if available to you. So you're adding a little twist here, pushing your right elbow into the right knee slightly. Good work, everybody. Keep it up. Keep your breath deep, slow and controlled. Inhale here. For those who wish, you can create a bind and twist, bringing your right arm underneath your thigh and your left hand to grab hold of the right hand. And you can continue gazing up. Fantastic work. Okay, one last very strong hold here. Release the bind. Inhale, reaching both arms into an extended side angle, looking forward, still opening into the twist. And then slowly coming back to center, bringing the right foot, stepping the right foot back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Now if you need some rest here for a moment, then come into child's pose, pause the video for as long as you need, continue when you're ready. Otherwise, stepping the left foot forward in between your hands, warrior sequence on the other side. So, slowly coming up, you can turn on the right foot, right heel, grounding, coming into, easing into your warrior one. Finding your stance, finding your breath. Easing into the opening of the hips and finding a balance between the activation of your muscles and the easing or resting into the pose. So good checks to make as always are your facial muscles relaxed. What is your general idea of this pose, i.e. where is your mind at? And again a reminder, it's really always about how you do what you do, it's not about what you do. So coming into the place of moving, acting, doing everything with compassion and love. And opening with that thought into warrior two. So exhale, opening your arms, left arm forward, right arm back. Beautiful. If ever you need a rest, you need to release the warrior pose, then do that. Follow your own body. You know yourself what is best for you. In fact, as yoga instructors, we're really only instructors. We can encourage you and we can um, inspire you and we can even teach you a little bit but most important is what you're teaching yourself okay you ready to reverse your warrior turning the left palm up inhale and exhale reversing want you that peaceful trusting upward gazing Take a breath in here and release warrior for your extended side angle. 
right arm is an extension of your right leg so you want ideally a line here from the right foot along the right side of the body and then the right fingertips extended up beautiful holding here for a moment and then bring the right arm up and the left hand down with the fingertips pointing down right by your left heel the gaze can go up deep breath in exhale out now for those who want creating that bind with the left arm now going underneath your left thigh and your right arm grabbing hold of your right left hand coming into this beautiful deep hip opener and twist take a deep breath in and exhale release for the last strong hold extending both arms into that extended side angle and inhale return back to center exhale hands down stepping your left foot back downward facing dog gently walking it out shaking it out and then bringing your knees down and once they're down opening the mat distance apart for a wide-legged child's pose coming into that resting fashion here forehead on the mat and just taking a couple of deep breaths Always a good time here to check in with your body. And also, this is the moment where we're going to slow down the practice for just a few last hip opening holds that work more on a restorative scheme. So, if you have relatively tight hips, this might be a good time for you to get a pillow or a block or a blanket, something that helps you. Um, to keep your hips level in the next pose, which is pigeon pose. So slowly here working your way back into all fours, lifting your hips. And then you can start with your left leg, bring the left foot forward towards the right hand, left knee just behind your left um, hand. And then slowly releasing into your pigeon. So what you don't want is to open in that fashion that the right hip basically comes off the mat. You want both hip bones pointing down towards the ground. Now if that's a little bit difficult and your left hip is on in the air then rather slide something underneath a pillow or a block. Anything really will work. And then breathing here into this beautiful stretch because you should feel in the glutes and then also in your TVs out here. Again, a reminder to soften your facial muscles and clench your jaws. And if available to you, feel free to come onto your elbows or even creating that pillow with both your hands and resting your forehead on it. If you feel like you want to stay in pigeon pose for longer, I find it a beautiful pose to be in for a couple of minutes. I just pause the video here and stay for as long as you want. Otherwise, continue shifting over onto the other side, stepping the left foot back and changing over right knee to the front. The further you bring your front foot, the foot of the front leg, forward the more intense the stretches so if you bring it relatively parallel then you'll feel quite intense stretch especially in the tv in the outer thigh basically so adjust to where is good for you so you'll feel that one side is always a bit harder than the other and one that is more difficult for you i encourage you to spend more time in the 
and this part is on the side that is harder. This is where, even though we always encourage you to be comfortable and slow down, etc., but this is where we want you to come out of your comfort zone and go beyond. Again, here you can enter the pose, bringing the elbows down if available and if accessible, creating a pillow for the forehead to rest on. The most important here is that you don't want to clench and make it difficult for you. You want to ease into the pose, especially if you're staying for a long time. The communication between your mind and the body from mind to muscle must be one of trust. So don't push. honest with yourself, be compassionate with yourself. And again here, if you would like to hold pigeon pose for longer, especially if it's hard, I recommend to do it and just pause the video for a moment and say, to release the pigeon pose slowly and in that release taking it very easy keeping the left knee on the mat coming into four point kneeling and then just doing a little circular motion with both shoulders spine and hips into both directions just to ease it out and then bring your knees together, feet together, inhale and exhale into a child's pose once more, this time with your legs closed. You can reach the fingertips forward here into nice length for the side body or bring the arms back with the palms facing upward. And then tune back into your deepest, longest breath. So this was very much a sequence for your hips, designed to open your hips from here, take any transition that feels good to you into coming onto the, onto the back. So you can roll again on your spine, you can do whatever feels really good to you. And as a finishing pose, final pose here, I recommend a happy baby. Slowly coming down, bringing your feet up, flexing your feet and grabbing hold of the outer edges of your feet. Gently open your hips here. And this might not look very flattering, but oh, this is feeling so good. My baby is now 10 months old and she's doing this all the time. More playful though, more movement. So if you feel like you want to have some movement in here, like straightening, like eating your toes, which she can do, then feel free to do that. You may want to gently roll from side to side. And then slowly get yourself ready for Shavasana. So if there's any pose that you would like to take, feel free to do so. Some at this point always really love an inversion, which could be a shoulder stand here or a plow pose. I'm going to, I'm going to instruct the plow pose for you today. So from your happy baby, place your arms alongside the body, palms facing down, shoulders down, chin to chest. You want to make sure that your neck stays completely relaxed throughout the whole pose. There's no tension in the neck, no, neck, no weight in the neck that will be in your shoulders. And then straightening your legs and then you slowly want to bring your feet up above the head and then the feet up behind you. Maybe your toes touch the ground, maybe they don't. But again, you try to make your, have your weight all on your shoulders and none in your neck. Inhale here, 
and exhale, slowly prepare to release vertebrae after vertebrae, slowly coming down, hugging the knees into your chest, and then coming to a short fish pose, which is a counter pose, opening your throat, so you want to lift the top of the head onto the mat, and you can stretch, in, stretch your legs out here, here for your Opening your heart. And then prepare for your Shavasana. Take any adjustment that is needed. You might want to get a blanket and cover yourself. Remember, we relax the most with your shoulders down. So if your shoulders are up by your ears, then pull them down and stretch your arms out wide away from the body, not so close. And then also for your legs, wide distance is really good. If your feet are cold, put on some socks. You're lightly as you relaxing and releasing here to have a quite drastic decrease in body temperature. So make sure that you can stay relaxed and really drop into a deep Shavasana. And I encourage you to take time for Shavasana as this is where the magic happens. This is where all the information is integrated. And this is where you learn. So get ready. Relax your feet and relax your legs. Relax your hips. Relax your lower back. Relax your abdomen. Relax your shoulders. Relax your whole torso. Relax both your arms left and right, both your hands left and right. Relax your neck, your throat, your face. Relax your forehead, your jaws. Relax your entire body. Stay in Shavasana for as long as it's good for you. I recommend five to ten minutes. Thank you so much for practicing with me. And I hope to see you soon on the mat. Namaste.